Okay, so here's a type of question you might see. And the question says, uh, what is the minimum coefficient of friction, which we call mu, so the block remains at rest. Okay. Um, so this is a, we're going to have to analyze some forces here and figure some things out. Um, so I'm going to start with some arrows just to indicate where those forces are going. Uh, so we're going to have gravity there. We have our normal force up this way, but we'll draw them down here so we can show the addition of those values. And we're going to have an accelerating force there. Just oops, oopsies. And let me just fix this so it all fits right. And let's label what those forces are. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, so there's normal. There's what we've called FA. Okay, that's what tends to have this accelerate down the plane. And here's the force of gravity, also known as weight. And then there's going to be, I don't like that color, there's going to be a frictional force on here as well. So I'll write that in. Okay. Um, so what we want to know is, essentially, at what coefficient of friction will the frictional force be large enough that it exactly equals FA? Okay, does that make sense? So let's just write a note about that. When FA is equaled by FF, uh, the block can remain at rest. We'll say just, just remain at rest. Under these conditions, where FA and FF, and we're talking magnitude-wise, right? Uh, they're pointing in different directions. So what we want to say is that they're the same, but pointing in opposite directions. And that's what our arrows are for, right? They're indicating which direction these uh, forces tend to point. When we say just remain at rest, what would happen if you had this exact condition, this was sitting at rest, and then you just came along and gave it like a little push? What would be the result of that? Yeah, so if you push this, right, essentially, it'll just stay in motion, right, because there's no net force. It's just as if there was no force at all and it was in motion. Um, that's Newton's first law. So let's figure out how exactly we go about calculating out these values. Um, so we know the force of gravity, or weight, um, Fg equals Mg, right, and then... If this is if this is FG and we transfer this angle up here, we showed that in a previous video why that's true. Um, FA is going to be equal to MG times the sine. It's the opposite opposite side of the angle, sine theta, and this is going to be MG cosine theta. And if you remember from before, when we defined FF. Um, that was equal to the normal force times mu. So mu times Fn. And if N, Fn is defined as mg cos theta, then we get mu mg cos theta. Okay, so let's write this stuff out. Let's put this over here. And then we'll say that, uh, you know, Fa is equal to mg sine theta. And force of friction equal to mu mg times the cos of theta. And we want to say that these two values are equal to each other, right? So mg sine theta is equal to mu mg cos theta. And this is the condition where the net force on the object is zero. So the minimum mu value, the mu value we find here, the minimum mu value is the value that um, 
if you have a mu value equal to that or greater, then the net force on the object is zero. Okay? Now look at what we have. We have mg and mg on both sides. Divide off an mg from each side, and you get this. Okay? Or you get mu is equal to sine theta over cos theta. This is universally true for any angle of 25 degrees. In fact, any angle you throw in there changes the minimum mu value, but there's a mu value associated for, you know, for this to stick on if you want um, and not slide down for any angle uh, up to 90. At 90, something strange happens, but uh, you can maybe sort that out for yourself. What happens if you put 90 degrees in here? But we're at 25, so you end up with sine 25 degrees divided by cos 25 degrees. Let's see what you get. Okay, so you get uh, you get uh, oops 0 0.47, and some of the um, more astute students, I think, pointed out that sine divided by cos is the same as tan. So you should also be able to say, I believe that this is true. But I'm going to double check that. <laughs> No, I think it is. And yeah, that is right. Yeah, it's the same as saying tan theta. So let's just review what that means, okay? I'll write that down one more time just to clarify. What we're saying is um, for a given angle, whatever that angle happens to be, the minimum mu value such that the force of friction will end up being equal and opposite to the accelerating force is simply tan theta. Okay? Um, obviously, if you're at a 90 degree angle, there is no normal force, and the math uh, will give you an, un, an unusable value. Okay? If you remember what your tan, tan graph looks like, that should make sense, because I think it's an asymptotal value upon approaching 90. Okay, done. Come